so very good evening everyone those who have joined for this session today or should i say tonight a very very hearty welcome on behalf of ramakrishna mission vivekananda cultural center shillong on this webinar on maintain your business account with tele and gst yesterday we had a full session on tele and uh, it was uh, a beautiful session done by miss alatmeri kharumnoid i believe whatever your question was or your doubts regarding tele has been cleared tonight or this evening we will be uh, exclusively delivering on gst this is ajit mohan pal and i have with me mr daniel hausel one of the very common and very famous gst officer from central government gst who is so very well known in entire northeast as a gst officer as well as entire india he has authored one gst ready day corner which is not only very useful and uh, handy for all the officers of gst state government or central government even the trade people are also using it for their purpose for any gst purpose you can download it this is available in the net and uh, this is gst ready day corner by published by shillong commissionerate shillong gst commissionerate so i also at the same time ex uh, extend a very hearty welcome to mr daniel hausel who is sitting on my left we will be uh, discussing and uh, just the basics or the very overview of gst and those who have come with a very uh, you know kind of any clarification as we so said gst solutions those who have already got certain questions with you or during the time of my deliberation only you can just go on asking the questions in the chat box and all the questions will be answered by mr daniel hausel the moment i finish with my deliberations on gst overview so we start with the gst overview gst as you know this is a this is an indirect tax i think i should not say much on indirect tax everyone knows indirect tax is something that even a child also has to pay whatever you buy from the market if it is taxable in nature like a toothbrush or toothpaste the tax structure is already there though it is already paid by somebody the trader but it is ultimately borne by the common consumers and so only it is called as indirect tax and direct taxes as you know this is income tax that you pay directly from your salary gst is an destination based tax based on the concept of supply of goods or supply of services that destination based it goes from here to there it goes from place to place at every place wherever this supply take place supply of goods or supply of services takes place there is gst applicable on it and another thing that goes on along with this supply is called itc so we'll be discussing this in coming uh, slides tax is collected at every part but remember that let me make it clear that when tax is collected at every every level at every stage it is collected only on the value addition whatever value is added at that level like when it goes to a retailer retailer if he is taxable person then he also adds some value in it like some amount of over over at expenditures plus his margin of profit he pays only on that rest of the things is taken care of by the itc the entire administration is nowadays online and no interface with tax man earlier for obtaining one registration one had to go to the office and it was not very easy to obtain a registration nowadays one registration as you know one tax one nation it also applies to one registration because earlier to start with the business one had to take a registration from the central government as well as from from the from the uh, state government and and nowadays it is only one registration which is pen based and 
if you have taken one registration that is enough for any kind of a business any kind of supply of goods any kind of supply of services so one tax one nation one registration one return so we'll discuss even about what is return now coming to registration not anyone and everyone who were involved with the supply of services or any supply of goods needs to get registration from the word go there is something called threshold limit the threshold limit for registration means uh, till this level one may not take any registration it's optional you may take you may not take up to 20 lakhs of rupees of uh, turnover for those who are in the special category states like arunachal pradesh manipur meghalaya mizoram nagaland sikkim tripura puducherry telangana and uttarakhand this is in uh, in short all the northeastern states excluding the state of assam including sikkim then other than north states it is puducherry telangana and uttarakhand who are also involved as special category states and here the turnover is 20 lakhs for supply of goods for other states it is 40 lakhs uh, for other states and union territories it is 40 lakhs till 20 lakhs or 40 lakhs of business no registration is required and threshold limit for services for supply of services it is 10 lakhs or 20 lakhs 10 lakhs for this no, for the special category states as i said all the northeastern states um, excepting assam and it also includes sikkim puducherry telangana and uttarakhand registration is state specific if you are uh, rendering your services in in the in one particular state then you have to register in that state one registration of course but supposing you have got some your your outlet in some other state in guwahati somebody is supplying goods in 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 um, shillong as well as in guwahati or some other state then separately in each and every state a registration is required but within the state one registration is enough for maybe any number of business um place of businesses addition uh, additional places of business the main uh, place of business wherever from where the accounting and everything is made this is called the principal place of business where from the re returns will be submitted where from will be applied and it can have supposing it you have got so many outlets this is called additional places of business and these additional places of business could be any number of additional places of business now how to obtain a registration registration obtaining a registration is very easy the common portal is gst.gov.in from there you have got one um, menu called of, of new registration and in that new new registration gst reg01 part a is to be filled first in the part a only three things are required number one is a uh, registered mobile number one email id and uh, your pen card this is number one is pen card pen number number two is a mobile number and email id the moment these three things are filled up in part a at once a trn number is generated and a uh, temporary you know password and a username is given with that username and password once again when you log in into the the same uh, portal that is gst.gov.in you have to fill in part b part b contains the every details of the um, taxable person may it be a company or may it be an individual or private limited company or anything of that sort if it is a private limited company or a limited company you have to give the uh, num the names of all the board of directors and all the um, pen number of everyone with bank details and everything and if it is a part if it is in uh, proprietorship also bank details along with the um, proof of address um, and 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 photograph everything is to be filled in there within three days this uh, the moment this part bills is submitted at once an arn is generated acknowledgement um, receipt number and within three days registration will be sent to the registered email id of the of the person applying for the registration supposing within three days it is not received then this arn number itself is treated as the as the registration number other authentication has been made mandatory from 1st of april 2020 an individual should undergo authentication of other number in order to be eligible for registration however if other number is not assigned to any individual he shall be offered alternate 
and viable means of identification okay persons requiring to undergo authentication of other number is anyone who is an authorized signatory of a company or authorized signatory of all types number two managing partner or authorized partner of the partnership firm or a karta of a hindu undivided family all these categories of people require a other number exemption from other authentication is given to certain classes of persons other authentication for the purpose of registration would not apply to a person who is not a citizen of india or who is not belonging to these classes that we discussed any individual or authorized signatory of all types means this is required managing or or and or authorized partner karta of a hindu undivided family in case uh, there is no other number where a person other than those means mentioned there they, this he is a non resident indian other than this uh, what happens is this play principal so business will be inspected by the gst officials and in this in that case this registration will be granted within 60 days from the date of application so this is in natural what is registration with threshold limit but there are certain categories this 20 lakhs 40 lakhs or 10 lakhs or 20 lakhs do not apply at all in these cases supposing somebody is engaged in interstate supply of goods or services interstate from one state to other state as we said this is destination based tax and always the tax component also i believe yesterday only you have been told the tax component also differs supposing it is within the state then in gst only two types of taxes are uh, attracted number one is cgst then sgst in place of sgst it could be utgst if it is an union territory otherwise supposing it is going from one state to another state then it is igst which is applicable so if somebody is paying igst invariably he has to take registration there is no threshold limit available to him any casual dealers any casual dealers who is registered in meghalaya but he has to go to assam for certain uh, certain uh, business and he has to he will deliver certain services out there or he will supply goods from that place temporarily he can take a casual casual registration in that case supposing somebody comes from mumbai for certain reason to northeast any of any of the states in assam and he renders certain services he has to take casual casual uh, dealers registration which is temporary isd those who are involved in input service distribution input service distribution is one person who buys or supposing he has got so many business places and he buys all the in, uh, send with all the inputs commonly and then he distributes all these inputs to his sub units and he has to take a registration as an input service distributor for him also there is no threshold lim limit uh, uh, you know available those who are paying reverse charge as though the service is received by me but then i have to pay the taxes this is called reverse charge suppose somebody is receiving certain services from uh, import sellers importing certain services in that case the service receiver himself becomes as if he is the service provider and he has to pay the taxes in a reverse charge manner e commerce operator online business like um, amazon then uh, this flipkart and all this oidar online information and database access and retrieval services this is mostly you know import services in this sorts of things also the if the impo um, the importer means the sorry the exporter from outside india if he is located outside india like ola uber services and all these things supposing they are providing the services from somewhere outside india they have to take a registration from from uh, either either through an authorized representative or they have to make their presence somewhere within india wherever they want to render the services non resident dealers as we said non resident dealers anyone coming from outside tax deduction at source tds this is applicable only in case of government departments public sectors and all person supplying on behalf of other registered person supposing somebody is a consignment agent or be or acting as an agent for certain registered dealers then he also has to take compulsory a registration where there is no uh, threshold limit applicable and this is how uh, a registration looks like it's a 15 digit uh, number and you can see the very first two digit represents the state this is the state code 
is the state code of Meghale. The state code of Assam is 1818. In between these 10 digits are nothing but those pen number, and then rest three numbers, entity number of the, of the, of the same pen, supposing he has got um, single entity, double entity, like that. And rest two alphabet, Z is by default, and check the sum or something. This is, we always say, these are ghostly three numbers. So it is, it is, it is, you can just forget, just remember that those first two digits represent state code. And in between those 10 digits are nothing but pen number of the company, pen number of the person, pen number of the taxable person. Now, besides this threshold limit of 20 lakhs or 40 lakhs, there is a category now which is called composition scheme. After crossing threshold limit of 20 lakhs or 40 lakhs for supply of goods, one has to take registration, has to take invariably a registration for supplying the services. Even if it is intrastate within the state, then also they have to take. But there is one relief for those, you know, entrepreneur, those starters, those who have started their business, maybe or trading goods for them till 75 lakhs in the special category states or till 1.5 crore in the other states, they can pay the taxes at a nominal rate. Means, supposing the tax rate is 18 percent, tax, tax rate is 12 percent or 5 percent or whatever it may be, they will pay at a concessional rate. I repeat, for those who have crossed 20 lakhs or 40 lakhs, and have not crossed 75 lakhs or 1.5 crore. 75 lakhs for those uh, de those um, dealers in in the, in the special category of special category states and 1.5 crore for other category other states. They will not be uh, you know they can they can avail this scope of composition scheme and they can pay at a nominal rate of 1% for the traders. This is not available for the service sectors. For service sectors, accepting restaurant service. Restaurant service can avail this composition scheme and they can pay at 5%. Though composition scheme also is available for service sectors, but in a very limited manner, in a very specific manner. Let's see what is that one. Okay, first of all, let us discuss this one first. Um, that the, whoever is coming under the composition scheme for them there are certain things which they cannot uh, do is no interstate business they cannot supply anything interstate they have to do the business within the state no input tax credit is available to them they cannot avail any input tax credit for for uh, mitigating the tax liability and they have to pay it from their pocket only plus it is not at all available for e-commerce operators e-commerce operators like Amazon, Flipkart and all, they cannot avail this one. One, uh, anyone who is applying for uh, for the scheme has to amend the Part B of Form GST REG01. As we discussed, that Part B is to be filled in after Part A. But already somebody who has already obtained registration, he can opt in this one. Otherwise, who are obtaining the registration for the first time after the threshold limit of 20 or 40 lakhs, they will have to mention it in Part B of the registration form. This is also called the intimation form. And the day he um, amends his Part B, from that day he becomes eligible for availing the scheme of composition. There is there are certain formalities. One of it is that he has to submit in GST ITC 031 form a, fund, a statement within 180 days from starting to pay tax under the composition scheme and any intimation supposing somebody has opted for composition scheme in Meghale he has got business in Assam he has got business in Mumbai business in Delhi then one option in Meghale would be considered as an option for all the uh, businesses outside the state from throughout India wherever he has got a business in the same a pen number against the same pen number then all these um all these establishments also do come under the composition scheme and remember that the aggregate value for composition scheme or whatever for 20 lakhs 40 lakhs it becomes it becomes uh, um, uh this one it becomes uh, aggregate value for all not that it is only for for uh, state of megale but it becomes for the for the entire states and the aggregate value is counted you know calculated rather calculated based on 
the whatever number of business you have got throughout India. Aggregate value is for whatever business you have done in Meghalaya, whatever business you have done in um, done in uh, the state of other states. If you have got your businesses, number one, number two, even those goods or supplies whose which you have made, um, which are exempted from GST, that also is counted. It's a bit different. We're not going to all these sorts of things. We cannot finish it otherwise. Composition scheme. With as I was saying that to us to the service providers also to a certain extent this composition scheme is available from 1st of April 2019 this has been extended to individual and independent service providers even for those who are providing services as well as goods but they will have to pay a nominal rate of 6% that is 3% CGST and 3% HGST no question of 6% IGST as we said for composition scheme no scope for uh, interstate supply. It has to be intrastate only. And this is that, uh, that exemption or this is available for those who have not crossed 50 lakhs, not 75 lakhs or 1.5 crore for those supplier of goods, which is available for service sector, either restaurant service, they will be paying 5% of the GST. Um, the tax, that means 2.5% CGST, 2.5% SGST. But for those uh, other than these service providers, who are individual and independent service providers, they can avail uh, till 50 lakhs, but they will have to pay 3% CGST and 3% SGST. Certain conditions are there. Uh, we have discussed other conditions. There is another condition for supply of goods. What they have to do is, since they cannot collect any tax from the customers, they have to mention it that they are a composition dealer, very prominent business premises number one number two for each and every bill that they will be issuing these words has to be written composition composition tax taxable person not eligible to collect tax okay these words are to be written in each and every bill another thing that they cannot issue any tax invoice they cannot issue any tax invoice because they're paying um, nominal rate plus those who are purchasing from the composition scheme dealers, even if they pay 1% tax, this is not available as ITC to the purchasers. So only they are not eligible to uh, you know, issue any taxable invoice. For composition dealers, compos those who are coming under composition, they are submitting a return called GST CMP08. This is to be submitted quarterly by 18th of the following of the month following the quarter. Supposing it is the September quarter, say July, August, September for three months, they will be uh, paying the tax by 18th of October 2020. Plus, they have to submit their return also by 18th of the month. And as you know, that tax has to be first paid and then the return can be filed. Until and unless the tax is paid in GST regime, this is very, very specific. In earlier regimes, what happened in central exchange, in service tax, or even in VAT, the return could have been submitted without paying the taxes. So only on the day of when GST was rolled out, there were more than 10,000 crores of service tax not paid, whereas these were declared in ST3 returns. And composition scheme dealers will be submitting annual return in the form GSTR4. I may make it uh, a bit clear here that initially when, uh, when the time when GST was rolled out, the composition tax payer had to submit the quarterly return in the form of GSTR4, GSTR but now this has been changed and it has been made as GST CMP08 and GSTR4 has become the annual return. Now coming to input tax credit, which is one of the most important part and factor for which GST is going to make the life easier for a consumer. Input tax means any taxes which is paid in the form of CGST, IGST, SGST or UTGST or whatever under GST Act, these duties or taxes, whatever has been paid by the purchaser who is who is using it for furtherance of business, supposing some manufacturer who purchases certain inputs and then, then he pays the taxes on these inputs or supposing he pays taxes on capital goods. Capital goods are required, plants and machineries. Even a computer can become, may become a capital goods. Supposing the capital, uh, there are so, so many factories nowadays who are using mechanized system. And so with, without computer, it cannot run. So this computer becomes absolutely capital goods. Supposing somebody is issuing invoices from this computer 
then it becomes a capital goods but supposing somebody is using using in office for totally specifically for office purpose which could be for business purpose as well as for other things capital goods is not allowed uh, itc on capital goods is not allowed so there are two conditions number one it has to be used in course of business is number one number two that it has to be used for furtherance of business so in that way any input which is bought which may be in the form of a raw material and any taxes paid credit is allowed any any capital goods on which taxes are paid and this capital goods is is capitalized in their asset register means in the in the in the account statement this capitalized then then kept on capital goods also the credit is allowed but there is one condition so far as capital goods is concerned you know in earlier regime it was um, capital goods credit was allowed only up to the up to 50% only but then nowadays under gst regime 50% of during the financial year when it was received and rest of the 50% during any following fiscal years but nowadays under gst it is 100% which is available on the first year itself but there is only one condition that the credit which is availed on any capital goods on this depreciation under income tax act cannot be claimed on that part of the value which forms the itc if i if i explain it very easily means um, whatever taxes has been paid and on whatever taxes credit has been availed so while computing the depreciation under income tax act these has to be excluded from the value and depreciation claimed input as i have said it involves anything other than capital goods used or intended to be used by the supplier in course of furtherance of business and in capital goods please remember that land building or any civil structure is not allowed telecommunication towers for those who are in the business of telecommunication this is not allowed pipelines laid outside the factory premises also is not allowed there are certain things this is directly disallowed and another thing that i said is which is not in the course of furtherance of business mean during the course of business an input service means any services other than this uh, you know supply of goods is one thing and another thing is this supply of services any services subject to certain exceptions used or intended to be used by the supplier in the course of furtherance of business supposing some services are uh, required even even for that matter even transport services also if it is for the uh, purpose of you know for purpose of furtherance of business then only this is available otherwise if it is not uh, in the form of um, form of use for furtherance of business then it is not allowed there is a rule for utilization of the senbet credit or itc credit itc input tax credit supposing somebody has got igst credit then he can use it for payment of igst first number 2 if still remaining he can use it for payment of cgst still remaining he can use for cg sgst sorry supposing he has got cgst credit he can utilize it for payment of cgst then he can utilize it for the payment of igst okay and supposing he has got sgst credit the same thing he can apply it to utilize for sgst next thing he can utilize it for igst but no cross utilization of cgst for payment of sgst or sgst for payment of cgst and cgst or sgst can be utilized only after igst is fully utilized okay this has been made mandatory with effect from 1st of february 2019 by a no by a notification now we go to classification which is one of the most important part because what happens at the time of clearances or at the time of sale you required to mention it in your tax invoice as well as in return in order to apply for a particular tax rate determination of the classification this is absolutely a necessity once the same is determined further classification in terms of hsn in case of goods and sac or you know service accounting code in terms of the services to be made or services to be provided is to be you know determined at the outset let us uh, it's it's important to note that hsn for goods are contained in chapters 1 to 98 and hsn for services are contained in only one chapter that is chapter 99 all the services are included in chapter 
and so far as um, you know duties tax is concerned gst law does not contain any commodity classification tariff but notification prescribes the rate itself and in respect of goods the notification requires a reference to the scheduled to customs tariff act 1975 whatever classifications are there of goods under gst this is as per customs tariff act 1975 this is internationally accepted ex accepted classification if you if you classify something under chapter 44 in india the same thing is means the uh, wood based articles the same thing is classified under chapter 44 in russia in in, in entire europe or entire america or anywhere and this is as per the customs tariff act as per the um, you know by the adopted by world customs organization in brussels in respect of services the notification requires reference to be had in annexes okay um annexes to the to the notification and uh, there is a distinct scheme of classification of services this is similar to hsn tariff entry for each class of goods there is a distinct tariff entry for each class of services and this is popularly known as service accounting code service accounting code comprises of six digit two digits remaining constant for each and every service that is 99 so it is coming under chapter 99 only the in other words see 99 is the prefix for on all ssc unlike in hsn goods which could be classified under 25 if it is cement or any other mineral products it could be chapter 44 it could be chapter 48 or if it is machinery all all these things it could come under 85 but for so far so far as services are concerned this is coming on only under chapter 99 in this scheme what happens the third digit third g after 99 the first one it refers to section whereas in goods the next um, uh, next two digits refer uh, refer to the two se uh, section or um, heading here it refers to section the fourth digit refers to heading fourth digit okay the fifth digits refer to group and the last one the sixth digit and with the sixth uh, with the sub classification with the sixth digit the classification of sse gets completed and you see the sixth digit is so very important if you can if you consider um only construction services you see 99 chapter 99 54 1 1 it refers to construction services of single dwelling or multi-dwelling or multi-storic residential buildings whereas if the last digit is changed from one to two it refers to construction services of residential buildings such as old age homes homeless shelters hostels and the like one three refers to construction services of industrial building such used for industrial or commercial activities one four refers to altogether different different type of services so this way you know it is it is it is uh, very different to the last digit so classification of services should be very properly done until and unless it is very properly done there will be two different things number one availment of itc somebody you know mistakenly classifies into a different heading then and he avails this avail the itc he might be you know doing an erroneous uh, um, this thing effort so this is absolutely a necessity for proper classification of services or uh, proper getting of the ssc service accounting code under gst the majority of dealers will need to adopt two or four or eight digit hsn codes for their commodities depending on their turnover during the preceding financial year dealers with turnover of less than 1.5 crore they will not require to adopt any kind of hsn codes for their commodities means they can issue their tax invoices also without mentioning of the of the hsn codes but those who have above 1.5 crore and up to five crores they shall be required to use two digit hsn codes that means somebody is dealing with on cement he can refer to only two five he may not refer to two five two nine point one one or something of that sort dealers with turnover equal to five crores and above shall require to use four digit hsn codes other than this supposing there is import or export then hsn codes of eight digits shall be required compulsorily shall be required it is compulsory there is no escape from that now coming to return you know in in gst regime there are three 
electronic ledgers number one is electronic cash ledger the moment for payment of taxes when somebody deposits some money into the cash it di it directly doesn't go into the exchequer it goes into the electronic cash ledger of the of the taxable person from where he can pay his interest or penalty or fee or anything of that sort but please remember that for each and every item that is either cgst or SGST or IGST or interest or fine or penalty, there are different heads. And whenever some cash payment is made, it has to be made under different heads only. But of course, nowadays for uh, for generating a chalan, there is auto generation, and you can easily rely the rely the the network for correctly generating one chalan. Tax liability register. This one, what happens? All tax liabilities, interest, and everything is shown there in the tax liability register. There is another one which is called the input tax credit ledger. Whatever the taxable person has purchased against his GSTN number, the moment the supplier of the goods or supplier of the services submits his GSTR one return, the first return, then the receive receivers input tax credit ledger automatically gets you know auto populated from here this is this can be used for utilization of payment all these things can be utilized for payment of taxes at the time of the submission of the return modes of payment under gst is you know gst accepts only online payment it has to be online up to 10000 rupees could be paid over the counter which is called otc over the counter through check otherwise if not online means it has to be paid through NEFT or RTGS means with a proper proper chalan. Now coming to submission of return, as we said, these three uh, electronic ledgers are most important for submission of the return. All supplier of tax, all supplier taxpayers are to submit GSTR one, wherein and all the invoice details invoice in inform in invoice wise informations are to be submitted and this is to be submitted by the 10th of the following month gstr1 needs to be submit, submitted even if there is no business those who are involved with export business there are many i know it fully well that they are not submitting an nil return which will attract a penalty monthly 50 rupees or 20 rupees subject to a maximum of 5000 it could accumulate to uh, per my personal experience is that it could accumulate till 75,000, 50,000 at the time when you surrender the registration. Don't think that you have suggest surrendered the registration, you have escaped all these fines and penalties. No, you will be traced. GST is very specific and very stringent in so far as non-compliance is concerned. So it is a suggestion that if you have no business during the month, during the tax period, please do submit a nil return it costs nothing just on the online go to the your portal your username and password go to your tax return dashboard submit a nil return tax supplier will file the return electronically only and there is or you can submit your nil return through sms also this has been very recently um, uh, recently amended and mandatory fields like place of supply either interstate or intrastate has to be mentioned very categorically because these are mandatory fields there are so many mandatory fields in in gstr1 the moment you start submitting you know it gstr2 a hardly anything to do it is an auto populated data hardly any action required until and unless you find that this this statement whatever is there in gstr2 a is not correct to your your record and if it is not correct to a record then only you require to make the amendments and then submit it by 15th of the following month because by the 10th when gstr1 is submitted then your your gstr2 a gets auto populated and it is visible and supposing it's everything is all right then nothing is required otherwise you have to uh, you have to either um you know um, amend it and resubmit it by fifth by the 15th of the month and gstr3 is auto populated once again it is based on your own gstr1 and gstr2 it gets the liability register gets auto populated after gstr1 and gstr2 are submitted gstr 3b is a summary of all the summary of gstr 3 return okay it is a summary of outward supplies and inward supplies all taxpayers accepting the composition scheme composition scheme 
uh, those uh, taxpayers will submit the return in GST CMP 08. They are not required to submit this um, GSTR 3B. GSTR 3B is monthly return. It's a summary of returns and it has to be submitted by the 20th of the following month and up to 1.5 crore those taxpayers will may submit their GSTR 1 quarterly but remember that for so far as GSTR 3B is concerned it has to be submitted monthly and new formats have been introduced with effect from 1st of April 2020 GSTR submission of GSTR 3 and uh, sorry GSTR 2 and GSTR 3 stand still now suspended but submission of GSTR 3B and GSTR 1 is continuing and as you know for COVID-19 the government has waived late fees for submission of the return for a few months last few months which is disturbed by COVID. Coming to EUA bill I'm touching all those very important aspects of GST for this is EUA bill is required to be generated for for tra transporting the goods worth 50,000 and above. It is to be generated from the common portal HTTP uh, double slash eWebill dot uh, NIC dot IN. It is required for transportation of goods worth more than 50,000 or above. This also is has got two parts, part A and part B. Part B Part A contains the details of the GSTN of the supplier, the recipient, place of delivery, invoice details, all these things. And Part B contains the details um, of, of, and it can be Part B can be generated by the supplier or the receiver or anyone. And Part B contains all other details regarding the vehicle number and transporter and all details. And part B has to be updated within 72 hours of generating part A. That means you have generated part A today. Within next 72 hours, it has to be, uh, part B has to be filled in. Otherwise, part A gets automatically invalid. And before generating, you have to enroll yourself in the EUA bill portal. And Anything which is generated in um, a part A or part B also filled in, it can be cancelled within 24 hours. Supposing this is verified on transit by the GST officers, then this cannot be amended. It can be amended multiple number of times to update. Uh, sorry, it cannot be cancelled. It can be multi. It can be amended multiple number of times. Okay, for multi multiple consignments transported in one conveyance. Those transporters like ABC Limited, ABC Transporter, and all these things—they, you know, transport the uh, transport the goods of so many uh, so many suppliers at a time. So for them, they can uh, they can generate only one. Or supposing they have got to so many EUA bills, they can once again generate only one EUA bill for the one for cons one consignment. Reasons of transportation always has to be mentioned in Part A, and. You know, validity of EUA bill is less than 100 kilometer. It is one day. For every other, every 100 kilometer thereafter, it is one additional day. Validity of EUA bill is counted from the time it is generated um, first, and one day means 24 hours. Validity cannot be except, extended except by the jurisdictional commissioner. It could be commissioner of CGST or could be commissioner of SGST. And transporter may generate another EUA bill within the validation period in exceptional circumstances. Now, supposing you could, there may be a question. Supposing one um, vehicle is coming from Guwahati to Shillong. So since it is within 100 kilometer, the validity is only one day. But midway through, it meets with an accident. So the answer is that it could be amended any number of times. And the moment it is amended, once again, 24 hours is counted from the uh, from the time the EUA bill is generated. And another thing, you may ask that supposing EUA bill is required for anything, any goods uh, worth 50,000 and above, what happens is, for, for but supposing uh, some ladies would ask a question that if some, supposing we buy certain, certain jewelries, we go to Assam, we go somewhere, buy certain jewelries uh, which is worth more than a lakh of rupees what to do <laughs> you know this there are exemptions to certain commodities certain goods and this may not be required so i believe already we have got uh, a number of questions so i would hand over to mr 
Daniel Housel kindly for his um, answers. And he would be dealing with all the questions that you have already asked. And I believe you will be asking questions on GST uh, only, exclusively on GST. But if you have any question on tele also, we will try, Daniel will try to solve it. Otherwise, um, you know, we will be exclusively dealing with this matter of, of, of GST only. So from my part, thank you so much. Hello. 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 Uh, I believe I am audible now. We will start with the questions, addressing the questions which you are having. We have a couple of questions with us. The first question is, what happened to the regular taxpayers income tax deduction at source? GST is a different act and the income tax act is a totally different act. And G uh, TDS under the GST Act is under Section 71 of the CGST Act, and it is deducted at source when the turnover is, uh, when the payment is more than 2.5 lakhs. And the deduction is just only 2% of the amount being paid exclusive the GST amount. And this GST, this TDS deducted at the rate of 2%, Whenever the deductor files the, his uh, TDS uh, return, that will automatically get reflected in the uh, login portal of the taxpayer and it will get credited to his electronic cash ledger. So there is no loss for the taxpayer, even if there is a uh, deduction of TDS under the CGST Act. This deduction is basically made so that every transaction which is more than 2.5 lakhs is captured by the system. So I believe uh, your, uh, the first question is addressed. And regarding uh, the second question, the next question, we'll come to the next question. The next question is, is GST required below 20 lakhs? As already been addressed in the earlier uh, slide by Pulsar, the threshold limit for special category state is 20 lakhs for supply of goods. And if the turnover is less than 20 lakhs, a person need not register. But there is a concept called voluntary registration. A person can apply for voluntary registration even if his turnover is less than 20 lakhs. And some of you must be thinking, why should I register if my turnover is less than 20 lakhs when the threshold is 20 lakhs? 20 lakhs turnover, what happens is that if you register yourself in the GST, even if your turnover is less than 20 lakhs, you will be included in the ITC chain, input tax credit chain for every purchases you have made. So for every purchases you have made, the ITC, the tax you have paid on the purchase, you will be able to get the ITC of that and that you can utilize for offsetting your tax liability for all your supplies. So GST registration for those whose turnover is less than 20 lakhs is not compulsory, but if they want to be in the ITC chain, then they can take voluntary registration. We'll come to the third question. Is GST registration required for small vendors? This, I think I have already answered in the second question only. A, a small vendor can apply for GST registration if you want to come under the ITC chain as a voluntary registration. Otherwise, it is not compulsory for a small vendor whose turnover is less than 20 lakhs. Then we'll come to the fourth question. When someone is a regular taxpayer after composition scheme, what happens to 
ITC. A person who has been who has registered in the GST as a regular taxpayer and he opts for composition scheme, then the ITC whatever is balanced remains in his scheme in his uh, credit ledger will lapse. That will not be available for him after he avail the composition scheme. Then can the ITC be claimed by the tax taxable person under composition scheme? Under composition scheme, ITC cannot be claimed because in under composition scheme, what happens is that uh, the amount of tax to be paid by the composition taxpayer is a very nominal amount, which is 2%. That is 1% CGST and 1% SGST. And a, a person can opt for compos composition scheme if his turnover is less than 75 lakhs. That is for notice. That is special category states. Otherwise, for other part of India, the limit is 1.5 crore. So a person whose turnover is less than 1.5 crore, they can opt for composition scheme. And for special category state, it is 75 lakhs. And they cannot take ITC under the GST law. We'll come to the next question. What is the difference between regular and composition GST? Composition G scheme is a very small, simple, hassle-free compliance scheme for small taxpayer. It is voluntary and optional. And uh, as I have told earlier, the scheme the amount of tax to be paid under composition scheme is only one person CGST, one person is GST, and the taxpayer under composition has to pay its fixed amount only. Then we'll come to the next question. Can composition to apply GST, do we have to surrender? sales tax registration sales tax registration has been subsumed under the gst law including all other taxes like service tax central excise tax VAT under the VAT regime those sales tax and all then octroi duties and all so when you apply for gst registration there is a person in the registration module where you can insert your existing sales tax registration Otherwise, uh, surrendering of a sales tax registration does not arise because whatever earlier in the earlier regime, whatever registration you, you are having, they all get subsumed under GST. So in short, uh, I can say that under GST, when you apply for the registration, whatever sales tax registration, service tax registration, central excise registration you are having, in the earlier regime, you can quote all that and you will be given a separate GST registration number. We'll come to the next question. Can composition taxpayer, can composition tax be collected from customer? I believe the question is, can a composition taxpayer or a composition registered taxpayer collect tax from customer? A composition taxpayer cannot collect tax from the customer. He has to pay 2% from the income he has received at the end of the month, each month, and that is to be deposited at the end of the quarter. So there, a composition taxpayer cannot collect tax separately from the customer. And in case if any composition taxpayer collect tax from the customer, you can always report the matter to your area GST offices. Is GST deposited per month? The next question. GST is deposited per month for a normal taxpayer. And for a composition taxpayer, it is quarterly. Then we'll come to the next question. What is GST credit? GST credit is an input tax credit which we have talked about. For every purchases a registered taxpayer makes, a normal taxpayer makes, 
he has to pay certain amount of CGST, SGST or otherwise if his purchase is from other uh, interstate then he will be paying IGST to his supplier. The amount of tax he paid for his purchases that tax amount he can avail it as an IPC credit that is called GST credit only input tax credit. It is an input for him and the amount of tax he has paid for the purchases he can take as a credit and he can offset or utilize this credit amount for all the taxable supplies he has made and if the balance in his uh, ITC ledger is less the balance amount he will offset by paying through cash so basically what happened is that a person who is in who has taken a normal registration for all his purchases from a, a registered GST taxpayer he can and if that supplier raise a GST invoice on the portion of the CGST and SGST on the portion of the CGST and SGST then that amount he can avail is input tax credit we'll come to the next question what is GST 3B GST R 3B it is called GST R GST return 3B which is a monthly return for a no normal taxpayer where the taxpayer will declare his total taxable value and on that he will calculate his uh, CGST and SGST amount and he will pay the deposit the amount to the government through while filing his GSTR 3B. So in short I can say that GSTR 3B is a return for a normal taxpayer and it, and it is a monthly return. Then we'll come to the next question. If I buy raw materials from supplier unregistered in GST, do you do I have to pay GST? An unregistered supplier cannot charge GST to his purchaser. So the question of paying GST for the purchase of raw material from un un unregistered supplier does not arise. Then on um, any other question i'll just have a check we have some more i think the next question is what happened if ua bill is generated but goods are not transported then the person who generate the ua bill has to cancel the generated EV bill online immediately. We'll come to the next question. Is the lock-in of EV bill different from the lock-in used for GST tax return? Yes, it is different. As already uh, narrated by Pulsar, there, there is a website for EV bill. You can Google it if you want and in the Google search bar. UA bill login, then you will you can get the login page. There you have to give your GSTN number. Then you will be able to generate UA bill from that portal only. So the portal of UA bill and the portal for GST return is different. We'll come to the next question. How GSTN codes are generated? How HSN codes are generated? HSN code is a standardized code which we are following from the WTC World Customs World Trade Organization. So it is universal and it is specifically basically for goods. The next question is what can be done if there are any error while generating EY bill? 
the error can be of different modes. It may be due to system error. If it is system error, you have to try again. Otherwise, basically till now, the portal is running very well and there should not be any error unless you have uh, not supplied all the required requisite data while generating the UAV. And in case if you have any issue generating UA bill or filing your 3B return or otherwise your composition return, you can always approach your nearest GST office of the central government or otherwise state government. Especially the central GST department, they have their own Seva Kendra unit in each and every uh, division or in, in their commissionerate. You, they, you can always approach, they will be able to help you out in generating EY bill or otherwise filing your return also. Next question, do EY bill require for foreign countries? EY bill is not required for foreign countries. It is within the country, country only, domestic. within India only. So it is domestic. And for G this, I have already uh, replied to apply GST. Do we have to surrender sales tax registration? So I will not repeat my answer again. Is EY bill also required for personal transshipment? This will depend on the kilometer you are covering plus the value of which you are transporting. And your for a person unregistered person, your transporter can always generate EY bill. So you can always ask your transporter to generate the EY bill. And uh, as already discussed earlier in the earlier slide, the the, the limit of uh, transaction is there for generating EY bill. Next question will be EY bill. Is EY bill required for export? EY bill is not required for export. As I have already said, it is within domestic within the country only. For transporting goods from one state to another or within the state, subject to a specific kilometer covered by the transport. So I believe this is the question. Let me see if we have any other question. If anyone have any other question or if you feel that the replies we have made is a little bit incomplete or you want further clarification, you can always post your question further. We'll be waiting. Can we put slides again? Yeah. Sorry. One slide we can show, no? I'll just show you one slide. This will clear most of your doubt. No. I'll just uh, give you the basic concept what GST is about through this slide. Let me just check one question. 
ITC on capital goods day with an elaboration. Okay. Uh, if you see this slide, we have supposing here for a person for a dealer in Silong. He purchased materials, inputs, that is raw material or inputs, certain item from a supplier in Delhi. This will be interstate purchase. It, for the person in Shillong, it will be an interchase, inter, interstate purchase. And for the person in Delhi, it will be an interstate supply. Supposing the purchase is worth 20,000. So, under GST, for every interstate purchases, we have IGST. And for every intrastate, that is the purchases or supplies within the state, we have CGST and SGST. So for this supply, for a person, a dealer in Shillong, purchasing a certain item from a supplier in Delhi, this will be interstate purchase or interstate supply on which IGST will be applicable. Let us say the purchased amount is 20, worth 20,000 for a particular item. And that particular item A, let us see, on that IGST will be applicable. And if the IGST rate is 18%, on this 20,000, the IGST of 18% will come to 3,600. So what happened here in this transaction, the buyer in Shillong will be paying to his supplier in Delhi, total amount of 23,600 rupees. That means the buyer in Shillong has paid IGST tax, that means GST tax of 3,600 to his supplier. So here we have the concept of uh, GSTR 3B and GSTR 1. So GSTR 3B, and GSTR1 for the supplier in Delhi, he will be filing GSTR1 also and he will be filing GSTR3B also. So for the supplier in Delhi, when he file his GSTR1, that GSTR1 will get auto-populated to his purchaser in Shillong in GSTR2A. And for the supplier in Delhi, he will when he file his GSTR 3B, the GST amount which he will pay to the government will be 3,600. So this 3,600, the supplier in Delhi is collecting from his buyer on behalf of the government. Since he has a GST registration, he is authorized to collect tax from his purchaser. And when he collect tax from his purchaser, he has to deposit to the government. And this 3,600, he will deposit to the government when he files his monthly GSTR 3B. Now let us talk about the buyer in Shillong. He has already paid 23,600 and on that the tax amount, IGST amount is 3,600. This 3,600, the buyer in Shillong, he can avail as an input tax credit that is called GST credit. So this the 3,600 will he, he can avail this credit and it will go to his credit ledger, input tax credit ledger. Now this, buy, this buyer in Shillong, he is not consuming the item he purchased from Delhi. He will be selling again within the state of Meghalaya only. So let us say he sold it for 22,000. The item he purchased for, for 20,000 when he sells in Shillong, Shillong or otherwise within the state of Meghalaya. He sold it for 22,000. So the transaction here is within the state. So when it is within the state, we have CGST and SGST. So for that same item, IGST is 18%. So 18% when you split in two, that is CGST and SGST, 99% each. So it comes to 1980, 1988. It comes to 3960. So what happened is that the buyer in Shillong, he, when he sells to his consumer, that is ultimate consumer, we call it a B2C, business to consumer, he will be charging 22,000 plus 
3960 from his consumer. That is, he is collecting CGST and SGST for the supply he's made, he made to his consumer. He is collecting this tax on behalf of the government. And this tax he collected 3960, he will be, he, he, he has to deposit to the government exchequer. So that means for the seller, for the buyer in Shilong, when he sell to his consumer, he will have to pay GST of 3960. So when he pay his tax, that is filing of GSTR 3B. If you see, he already have ITC of 3600. That 3600 he can utilize for paying this 3960. So when he paid 3600 from his ITC ledger, that is for the purchase he has made. This 3960 minus, uh, 3960 minus 3600, there is a balance of 360 rupees. This 360 rupees only he will pay by cash. In effect, the seller in Shilong will be collecting 3960 plus 22,000 from his customer. And when he file his GSTR 3B, he will be paying 3,600 from his ITC ledger. And then the balance amount 3, 360, he will pay by cash. So the concept of a person in the earlier question, the concept of a person who is below the threshold limit and uh, taking register, voluntary registration, as I have told, if they want to be in this credit chain, they can always take voluntary registration. So once you take a voluntary registration and once you are in the credit chain for every business to business transaction, you will be able to avail the ITC and your cash net cash payment will reduce. So that means your profit margin will increase if you are a registered taxpayer. Any other question? So this is the basic concept of GST, how it works. So for the seller in Shilong also, he will, in, at the end of the month, he'll be filing GSTR 3B. I believe there is no more question. There is one question regarding some uh, more details about capital goods. You know, uh, whatever I have said regarding capital goods, it was in a nutshell because what happened is it's a question of one hour's webinar and we thought it should be, you know, confined to only just the uh, the main features about what is ITC and what is ITC on, on raw materials and capital goods. Capital goods, you know, there are certain conditions. Number one, that it has to be used for furtherance of business. Furtherance of business means it has to be used for giving the businesses, number one. Number two, you know, there is a condition that it has to be, it has to be, you know, this asset has to be, you know, um, uh, it is called capitalization in the, in the books of accounts. Means it until and unless it is your own property, you won't capitalize these capital goods in the books of accounts. So it is just to say that if capital goods credit will not be available on those capital goods which are hired or on leased purchase, it has to be uh, you know that asset has to go into the books of accounts. Number one, number two, suppose I cite one example supposing a cement factory buys one uh, excavator. They require at times. This excavator is a kind of a vehicle which could be used for the purpose of manufacturing, extracting the limestone and bring, bringing it. But it has to be used within the pressings of the factory. Number one, within the pressings of the factory. Supposing it goes out of the factory also and used for other purpose, then it is not allowed. Num there are two questions. Number one, for further on so business within the business premises is number one. Number two is that. Uh, it has to be, you know, this has to be uh, capitalized in the books of accounts because until and unless it is your own property, you cannot take it. Number three, there is another thing that if any credit on capital goods is availed, then that part on which ITC is availed, that means the tax part, CGST, SGST or IGST or whatever it may be, 
this cannot form a part of the value for claiming the depreciation under income tax act you have got your liability for corporate tax and all in that one your uh, your uh, capitalization your entire books of books of accounts comes to play especially those capital goods whatever has been purchased those fixed assets all these things are a to take and fixed assets always their depreciation is counted for uh, the calculation of tax and all in that part in the calculation of taxes while calculating the depreciation this tax cannot be considered as a value of the goods otherwise always the tax part is a value of the goods i believe this is um, what uh, i can say it in that short uh, period of time i can tell you that uh, we in vikant cultural center we have regular classes for tele and with gst and you know within one hour we have two sessions rather yesterday we had one hour on tele and today we had one hour in fact one and a half hour today one hour and a half on gst uh, i believe it has been meaningful but i would always suggest those students or those who are aspirants to know what is or further details of tele and all i think i would suggest you please take an admission here in uh, ram krishna mission we are still uh, at this time of pandemic we are running all these online classes you have any questions also we have live classes recorded classes this is a total um online classes plus interactions also and uh, if you take an admission for further clearances on on gst the teachers are very uh, well equipped and well conversant and i am sure you can really um, benefit on you can really enhance your knowledge i believe with this we will come to the close of our webinar or workshop on um, maintain your business accounts with tele and gst i'm sure those who have attended have been um, you know it has been benefic beneficial for all of you and on behalf of ramakrishna mission shillong we once again thank mr daniel hausel who is so very uh, famous and he is also a, a gst day awardee uh, one of the chosen few in entire india for an award on gst day in 2018 plus as i said he has already authored a book gst ready to corner with his boss mr nv kulkarni commissioner of gst shillong and it is not only a very handy book for the uh, officers of um, state government or central government this is also a handy book for all those gst tax practitioners so i think with this we'll close our session tonight thanks to all of you who have joined thank you so much thank you so much indeed kubli shishivam